<laughs> we're gonna die. <laughs> no, you're not. Well, actually, actually, yes. No, wait. You're you're not supposed to die. Everyone else is supposed to die, but you're not supposed to. Die. Well, don't worry. I took that spell just like you said. I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Great, great. That's good. Hi, everyone. It is Saturday. It is time for Murder Hobo Inc. Um, <laughs> our attempt to uh, to throw levity and brevity and light and warmth and um, joyousness uh, into a very dark, dark world. Or we also play D and D and stab each other in the back whenever we possibly can. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. So, um, uh, if you're looking, wondering where Frank is, well, you know, <laughs> you're weird because no one yeah. else really gives a shit. But um, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> exactly, one hundred percent true. But uh, no, what's going on here tonight is we are in the fourth and the final um, playtest of, uh, of a module that I'm going to be running at Gary Con this year. This is at the end of March, I believe the 26th, 27th, 28th, and 29th in uh, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And the uh, cast of Murder Hobo Inc. has been kind enough to help me play test and run through some of the issues that I've had in module creation, character creation, and we are in the final episode. So without further ado, I will start off and have us introduce our characters um, so we can jump right into me killing him because I'm just about to kill him. All right, you can go back down. Yeah. Um, first, let's start with uh, with Kyle. Kyle, um, who are you playing, and what? I, and I want to do a little bit different. Now. Who are you playing, and how did you get to where you're at right now? Hi, I'm Kyle. I will be playing Hockerbrecht. Uh, I we got ourselves in a situation where the DM challenged us to split the party, and we did. Uh, so now <laughs> myself and the two other uh, PCs are going against the big bad boss already. Um, luckily, some changes to the characters were made, and we're going to die even quicker. Outstanding. Yes. Right. Uh, Carol, um, why don't you let us know who you're playing and uh, how, uh, how did you get to where you are right now? Well, hi, I'm Carol. I'm playing Denali or Dooney, the rogue. Uh, and basically, Blake decided to go charging in to the go the opposite direction for the where the rest of the party was going. And I did I'll go the first. Good, good old me decided to not leave. You know, uh, I forget what your character's name is. Damn it! I decided not to let. You go in the low. And now we're facing a couple of uh, Rimarazes. However, you pronounce them. Yeah, Rimaraz is fine. So below me is uh, Chris. Chris, why don't you explain uh, who you are playing and how you got to be where you're at? I'm playing Flemin, a uh, mountain dwarf fighter, and I got to where I am by falling Hawker Brick. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. There's a theme going on there. Uh, Ernie, why don't you uh, let us know who you are playing and how did you get to where you're at? Ooh, I'm playing Ethrel, the uh, kind of cocky suicidal fighter. Um, and everyone's in this bad situation because of me. That's, uh, that's kind of how it goes. Outstanding, Ernie. The, um, a leader, a, a true natural leader. Leader. This yes. little wood hatchet. <laughs> I, I do have my little hand axe and shield. I'm ready to charge in wherever that may lead. <laughs> Blake, why don't you let us know uh, who you're playing and uh, and um, how you got to where you're at right now, which actually isn't too bad because I believe you are invisible and flying. Uh, that, that I am. That's where we left off. Uh, I am playing Betty, uh, the SMR war cleric. Uh, I, I joined up with this uh, jovial ensemble of tireless supporters uh, to rid this world of uh, undead uh, evil creatures that it, it, are plaguing it. Uh, I had sensed the uh, a heat source nearby and charged in uh, at, upon hearing crunching noises, thinking that there might be survivors in danger. Uh, and I essentially just got whomped by a remoraz. 
Yes, but you are you are but free yeah, from my, my right mother, now. the goddess of coprophilia, uh, uh, smote it, and it's we. I'm I'm still not entirely certain how we're going to handle the situation because we aren't in as dire straits as we could be. That is correct. You are not in as dire straits as we could be. So where we left off, as the as our players had uh, let us know, we were kind of had basically split the party. Um, three of them had gone down south, uh, following Hawker Brex, understanding that there was an exit uh, down to the southeast, hoping that maybe they could, um, you know, search to see if the leader of the, uh, the, the Gnomish chieftain, if perhaps he had gotten out. On the way, um, you had kind of had to go by the chieftain's quarters, and inside there, you run into... Uh, where the vampire had taken up residence instead. And so that's where they're in combat. That's our group to the south. The group to the north, um, as um, Benny had uh, said, um, heard some chomping sounds and were basically uh, in a heat source thinking that um, they may be able to rescue someone. Being a cleric, of course, is going to want to want to rescue and, and, and smite evil, etc. cetera. Um, but ended up, catching a couple of Remorazes, chewing on the uh, remains of some gnomes. And in that standpoint, um, for, sorry, from that standpoint, they, um, they, they got themselves in some trouble. So we have split combat, two different parties, um, and we'll start off at the top of the initiative order in combat with our Southern group, because after walking in um, and seeing two mana cores and a vampire. And I had two devils as well, two barb devils. I've taken those out for play testing and balance sake, because if they can find a way to survive this three on three encounter, then perhaps they'll have a chance to run into some other nasties that I wanted to have for play test. They're basically just little puppets. Um, like I am one to do. So uh, top the initiative order. Let's have uh, Flemin, Ethereld, and Hockerbreck roll initiative, please. Woo! 16. Oh, oh nice. Um, I should probably have my character sheet out. You don't need it. Overrated. Oh, nice. Uh, 23. Flemin, give me, a, give me a, an initiative roll, please. Uh, that is a nat 20, so 21. Very good. Very good. All right, so we will start off with Hockerbrecht at the top of the initiative order. Hockerbrecht, what would you like to do? You are on the other side of the door, um, 30 feet. The door is about 10 feet wide. 30 feet in front of you uh, is, you see, a, um, like I said, a, a vampire lady. It uh, looks like she's wearing what used to be clerical vestments. You surmise she may be a spellcaster as well. To her left and right are a couple of man cores. What would you like to do? Um, good luck, boys. Lady, it was nice seeing you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and I step into the hallway where I will cast greater invisibility and put my back up against the wall. Okay. All right. All right. There's a there's a appropriate murder hobo thing to do. Turn Absolutely. invisible, so yeah. you can sneak up on uh, on the enemy and save your friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, uh, Fleming hit me so well. I, I know. I'm just. We're just right there. Fleming, it is your turn now. You um you again. You are about maybe ten feet. Uh, you are inside um, as you follow your, your fellow fighter, Ethel. You are 10 feet away, uh, and directly in front of you, 15 feet from you, is the, um, is the uh, uh, vampire. Uh, so you can easily close and strike, and to the left and right of her are manticores. What would you like to do, Clement? I will um, attack the vampire. With, okay. my battle, with my uh, battle axe. Wait, why do you get a battle axe? Because that's what I have. Because <laughs> he's a great carry hawk <laughs> character who's been there. You're just some nobody who showed up. With a hand, <laughs> axe. With a hand axe. Quit whining. 
Um, I will also use one of my superiority superiority dice, but I'll do that after. Okay. Oh wait, hold on. Use the attack. Oh, I don't need to use one of my dice. Okay, cool. Um, it's just a bonus action. So I will do my two attacks. Okay. Uh -huh. So I rolled a 14 and a 12. Okay, neither one of those will hit. <laughs> okay, so I, I will use, as a bonus action, I use my hand crossbow. And that'll be a 19 to hit. No, she's in full plate. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, sorry. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, when I said she's a cleric, that, that you know, she's a spellcaster. She's carrying a mace uh, and, and, and she's in full plate now. All right. Okay. Well, I guess that's my turn. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm coming to help. <laughs> sure, uh, you, sure. You won't be able to get there um, uh, soon enough. Um, she looks at you, Fleming, with just, she kind of winks and licks her lips. And Ooh, oh and my. you feel this, this, this overarching desire been taking to, notes from Frank. to be her friend and just to, just to, just to be her friend. Give me a wisdom saving throw, please. Uh, that is a nat 20. So 19. <laughs> <laughs> so so you feel this 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 deep affection for her, uh, but you also kind of notice out of the side of your eye almost a little bit these rivulets of blood kind of dripping out of her teeth and that kind of wakes you back into into reality that this girl is probably not your friend uh and she seems somewhat um discern um upset that you were uh that you were able to stave off her uh, her attempt to charm you uh Etherell, your turn awesome um yeah, I'm gonna go swing in, in with my hand axe, I guess, against this vampire. Okay. Uh, so uh, my first attack was an at one. Okay. Roll, How do you want to handle that? Uh, <laughs> roll, roll me, um, roll, roll me another to hit. Well, my second roll for that nat one was a six. Okay, so that's just a normal miss. If you roll the five or less, then we would have some problems. But, um, but we yeah. don't have problems. Okay. The weapon that <laughs> defines you would have been thrown across the room. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Unarmed strike no. against this vampress. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. So, uh, do so I no, get a that's second normal miss. Yes, you do. Yeah, that's All fine. Right. If, you get, if you get two attacks around, yeah, you're fine. My, my second attack is a 21 to hit. You hit her. Oh, you hit her. oh finally. First hit on her for 10 damage from my magical hand axe. Nice! Okay. okay. Very that, that's good. it. That's, that's all I got. All right. All right. Dunnelly, your turn. Oh. Back to the other side. Back huh? up to the north. Back right. up to the north. So, um... You have that little remoraz that that uh, that's that was kind of messing with you a little bit. That's still kind of messing with you. That little one really isn't the little one probably missed. So um, I think the big one is far more of a threat. And fortunately, after the that incredible move, holy shit, there was so much luck involved of divine intervention. Uh, we have a chance, I think. So am I like where am I like right next to the little guy, like with the melee ranger, or am I back a bit? Do you, would you say? Because it's going to make a difference. I went you're, told you are in melee range to either one of them. The uh, huh? the the, the, the bonus you're, action. You're ten feet away from the younger Remoraz, and you are I want to say thirty, uh, maybe twenty five feet away of the of their 
adult well, rim around. The bigger one didn't have 25 foot reach. Uh, no, the younger one, no. Yeah, the young one is 10 feet. Well, I hope the big one isn't 25 foot reach. Either. No, he's not. But he's not. Means. All right. Well, I want to, I'm going to use, oh, shit. Well, that means I'll give up an attack, but um, I'm going to disengage. I, okay. I remember I changed, changed Dooney up so that she is all crossbow now. Um, crossbow so she, expert, right. Before we, before we roll. Can crossbow. And the, the the one of speed. Before we roll this for the record, am I considered engaged with it still? That is a good point. Because that makes a difference. I haven't moved out of its area yet. It's it was basically just shocked by me. Yeah, it it, it it's still engaged with you. Um, you know, it it can sense you, uh, and until you were flying, it knew exactly where you were due to its tremor sense. Okay, so even though you were invisible, it was still engaged with you. Now it's trying to it's trying to locate you, and um, um, you're still its prey. So yes, you are still he is still engaged with you. You're still okay. Good, because it's for sneak attack. So okay. I so bonus action disengage. I'm I'm going to move out of melee range of the little guy. Okay, it would be much anyways, and then I will make the two attacks with the speed because I'm not making an official move action. Uh, well, let's see. First, I'll only flip this so I actually see the attacks. Well, those are with the crossbow of speed. So, well, one is a 20, and that is a 16 on the big guy. Those both hit. Oh, excellent. All right, so that's going to be 2d8. Uh, plus, what's my, oh, it's 5d6, I remember. I love rolling dice. Okay, so that's 4, 14, 19, 20, 22, plus, plus, plus 12, 22, plus 12. God, I can't 34. do so fast. 34. On 34, the, on the big guy. yeah. Yep. 34 on the big guy. Yeah, he is he is he is hurt. He is hurt, no doubt. He is hurt. But it is his turn. Yeah. And um he is going to roll against trying to hit Benny, but he's gonna be at disadvantage because he cannot target you. He just thinks you're somewhere close. So he's gonna roll at disadvantage to tr he's gonna like bite and try to bite in the direction of you, Benny. Okay. That's a four. That's me and eleven. No. Against me? No. No, no, no. Ed, against uh, against he, Benny. Advantage attacking the invisible one. Yeah. He, he he was he was trying to attack. Uh, he was trying to attack the Claire, the uh, Asimar, and um, he had disadvantage. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he 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 took the bolt from you, um, and you know that wasn't good. But he still he he can smell. He can sense there's someone right there. And these guys are not necessarily intelligent creatures, right? It's animalistic intelligence. So when there's prey oh close God. and they know there's there's prey close or they feel there's prey close, that's where they're going to be focusing their attacks. Now, okay. if you can't go on two or three more rounds like that, then then he'll probably move over to you thinking that his prey has left. Benny, your turn. Go, Benny. Okay. I am going to because I don't want to suffer another opportunity attack when I get range on this thing. So I'm going to use my action to disengage and drink my potion of heroism. Okay. <coughs> and I'm going to fly. About, how, how, how tall is this room? About 20 feet tall. This is drink your potion. Of I would like, to, like to move as high up as I can. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You can get 20 feet up to the, like your move. And you can go, you know, plaster yourself against the ceiling. Yeah, that's that's effectively what I'm doing. Okay. The young Remoraz uh, is going to follow you, Carol. You're out that's, of re you're out of range, but he can still move. Yeah, he can. I figured he was going to move up to me. Yeah, and he is, and he will try to bite you. 
Bring it. Okay, and let's do. Does a that to be a twenty-one? Ah, Every twenty-one. Yep. Okay. That hits. Not a lot. It's it's not a lot of damage that they do. That's why I'm disrespecting that one. I know. It's just this one only does two d ten plus four. So that'll be third. That'll be seventeen. Oh, ouch. Okay. 17 points of damage. And now we will move back wow. down to the south. We have the two manticores uh, are kind of move into these little corner positions. They whip out their tail. And uh, one of them will, uh, will uh, target uh, Etherel. And the other one will target um, Fleming. So they're going to use their little tail spike. <coughs> okay. So um, the first one that is going to, that's targeting Etheril, it's going to be a 27. Does a 27 hit you? Yes. Okay. Yes. Only, <laughs> only seven hit points of damage. That's all. Seven. Ooh. Okay. Seven. Seven. All right. That's not bad. No, it's just like little darts coming. It's like spikes, right? They're yeah, about two inch spikes. It's the first damage I took down in this dungeon so far. And that's going to be a 22 against Fleming. Does, does that get you, Fleming? Yep. Okay. And that will only do five hit points of damage against you, Fleming. Gotcha. Back at the top of the order, Hockerbreck, your turn. Oh, we lost Blake. Oh, Blake's gone. <sighs> oh, he'll be back. Yep. Yeah. back. Uh, your turn. I You're will invisible and against. Yes. I will step back into the room and I will do Steel Wind Strike whilst invisible. So all that cool Dragon Ball Z where you disappear, appear behind someone, punch them, disappear, appear behind someone else. No one can see. That's but outstanding. I will do it at advantage because I am a invisible. So first mana core. Okay. Um, 13, 22 to hit. That'll hit. Uh, second mana core. That is shit. Uh, 14 to hit. That hits. These, these guys just have natural armor class, but 14 does hit. All right, and finally, uh, uh, for um, my boo, my ex-boo. Yes, cathartic. Um, and that is 25 to hit. That hits her. Okay. That hits her. So for the total, we have uh, 10, 15, 20, uh, 28, 36, Points of force damage. Woo. Force damage? Yes. Yeah, it should be 60 10, if I'm not mistaken. Is that, that for each one? That is for each one, unless you want me to roll a 60 10 for each one. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. I thought that would be a, a nice little yeah. compromise. And I will uh, uh, appear, but not visibly, behind one of the manticores. Okay, one manticore is is um, you know a, more hurt than the other. Um, probably the first one that you that that you got, it one that's one that's probably hurt a little bit more than the other one is right. Now. We'll say I appear behind that one then at the moment. Okay, okay, it's, it's kind of obvious that one's bleeding a little bit more. Okay, okay, all right, and then we'll, let's go to uh, let's go to Fleming. Your turn, Fleming. I will uh, attack the one that just tried to attack me. Okay. Let me grab my dice. The Manticore, I assume. Yes. Okay. Uh, one attack was a 13, and the other attack was a 23. Those, what way? It was a 13? A 13 and a 23. Okay, the 23 hits, the 13 does not. All right. 
and that'll be eight slashing damage. And with my bonus action, I will take a shot with my hand bow. Okay. And that'll be a 13, no, a 12, so that misses. Yes, that will miss. That will miss, unfortunately. Okay. Now Cathartic is, is well and truly pissed off. Yeah. Um, and she she calls, um, and uh, what's she going to do? Yeah, she'll do that. She'll call, uh, she looks up, uh, casts some type of weird... Um, call out to some god that you haven't heard of but you think it may be uh think it may be nerul or urethanul or one of those other baddies like that and um a vertical column of flame just comes straight down um and basically uh uh Fries, um, Ethereld, and Fleming. So let's have you guys give me a give me dexterity saving throws, please. Oh no! Um, What's happened? Eighteen, six. <laughs> okay, eighteen and six. Okay. Um, so the eighteen. Did I fail that? Yes, you did. I'm gonna use my indomitable trait to reroll that saving throw. Okay. Ten. Oh yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> that I, was a waste. <laughs> I fail again. Yes, you did. Woo. <laughs> All right. Wait. Hold on. What's this luck trait? Um. Lucky feet. <laughs> saving. No, I have. The, it's called lucky. Yeah. Lucky. Feet, I guess. Oh. So it's it's a feat. You're, can, you're allowed to re-roll, but yeah, you, you, you're you're allowed to re-roll. Basically, is what it is. Three times a day. Oh, shit! All right, let's try this one. Come on, man! Please that's be a, lower. That's a fourteen. Oh. <laughs> no, nope, sorry. Fail. <laughs> it's at least a fifteen for sure. At least. Uh, all right. Well. All right. Well, so, um, damage is going to be. Let me see if I can add this. Right. Only like two. You're fine. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's uh, it's 25 hit points of damage. Fleming take half that. Twelve. Oh. Radiant and fire, half each. Okay, so nice. only only 25 hit points. Only. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 46 fire, 46 radiant. That's what flame strike is. And she will um, move. Uh, close to you, uh, Ethereld, uh, and you think that uh, that she's taking a special liking to you. Um, okay. I don't know why, but but you know she's just kind of feeling you right now. All right, Ethereld, it is your turn. As a matter of fact, yeah, she's I'm, I'm glad she got closer. I'm going to swing my axe at her face. Um, so a twenty-three. Does that hit? That does hit. Yes. Okay, so my first attack, that is only seven damage with my magical hand axe. And my second attack, a 12. That does not hit. Okay. Just seven damage with my little axe, then. And, seven damage um, with your little axe. I, mm, yeah, I'm going to just use second wind and heal myself up a little bit. Okay, she will use her one legendary action a turn to bite you. <laughs> Wait, I, I get to turn into a, a vampire? You may. Sure. Why not? Sure. What what's this bite do? It uh well first it has to hit you. So let's okay. just calm down a little bit. Well, I wanna know. I'm excited. <laughs> Ready to turn on my bite. Yeah, I, I really wanna be a vampire. <laughs> really? I wanna be a vampire. I have to kill her. <laughs> Can you just okay. let the bite happen? That's true. If you want to just be a willing, a willing recipient, you get to like the <laughs> right here. It, it's right. okay. I'll, I'll make it right. work for it. All right. Uh, she had a twenty-eight. <laughs> well, she got me. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, let me think here. That's going to be okay. You're grappled. 
and that will be a little bit of damage. That'll be 19 uh, hit points damage. Some of it, um, uh, 16 of it necrotic, and the rest of it is slashing. So 19 okay. hit points damage. Nice. And, and and you are grappled, so your movement is is, is zero right. Now. And that's that is her one. That is her one legendary action per turn. So um, Dunley, your turn. Back yep. up north. I'm literally kiting these things out the door. <laughs> so I'll do the same thing. I will uh, disengage and take two shots. And let's see. Uh, I know one of those is going to hit. Oh, I'm not on the right screen here. All right. So that would be a 24 and an 18, which I think both hit. Both both hit. Yes, both hit. This is the on the big guy again. Yep. Oh, my things. Oh, there's one murder hobo on my dice. So that's one six. So that's 10. Uh, not great. 21 and okay, I can't do some of 12. So that's 33. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. <laughs> the cross yeah, it's, it is, it is very injured at this point. Very, very injured. Good. Come on. Very, Betty. very injured. <laughs> now you, you've caused it to, uh, to reevaluate because now it's hurt and it's looked up and we're going to roll. One, two, three is going to stick with Benny. Four, five, six, it's going to switch targets. And that is a straight six. Damn it. So it I will switch that targets. Damage, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, it, you, you, you wounded it a lot. Uh, so now the, 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 the threat metrics had uh, changed. And it's going to be targeting you, Donnelly. Uh, as the Rimaraz, did I just say threat matrix? That's just. just yes, just, you did. <laughs> yeah, that was off. <laughs> just off. All right, sorry about something. All right, so that's a 22. Uh, a 22. That hits. I'm going to use my reaction to Uncanny Dodge for half of this. This is okay. the big guy, right? Yeah, this is the big guy. Right. That's um, half damage. Of that is going to be, uh, he rolled 50, so 25 points of damage. Holy shit. Okay, I'm glad I did that. Yeah. That would be most of what I had left. Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, the, that's, that's its attack. Uh, and um, oh. Penny, your turn. Is there a, a, a restraint check on that? A what? A restraining check? Yeah, does it? Does yes, it yes, yes. It may it may grapple you there. That is correct. So let's do um what I roll. Give me a strength check, please. Oh, this will be awesome. Because I have such a huge modifier. Uh that is cocked. All right, I'm putting this up here. I keep my dice just keep rolling down. Oh, that's a lot better than, I don't actually, I don't know what's, oh, that's not that better. That's only a 10 plus, yeah, nine. Yeah, so you're grappled and restrained as it coils up around you. God damn it. Benny, kill this thing. It's Benny's turn, and you are flying and invisible, Benny. I am going to charge at it. Uh, okay. Okay, with... Because of my potion, I am now blessed, so I get a D4 to my attack rolls. <coughs> I right, and you should have gotten like, like, is it like 10 hit, uh, temporary hit points? Yeah, yes, I also gained some temporary hit points, which yeah. is what I needed to actually engage this thing, because my, my range isn't going to be effective enough to destroy it. So I'm going to have to suffer some more heat damage by attacking it in close quarters. Right. So I am going to... Well, first, first we'll start with my with my first staff attack. Okay. That is that is a nineteen to hit. That'll hit. Okay. I'm so I'm going to roll these as I as I read them out. I'm going to do one d eight of bludgeoning for my divine strike. Okay. 
which is an eight. I am going to do the regular damage from that attack, which is 1d6 plus 4. That's also 8. And that is enough to take it down. Yeah. Okay, easy enough. That was two, it had 212, and that was 213. Okay. Um, so the Rimaraz is down, and the little baby Rimaraz is screaming pretty loud. I am going to go silence that thing with my bonus attack as a war priest. Okay. Uh, which is going to be a net 20. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, which is going to be another eight, which is, that's a two plus another D6 plus four, that's 10. And we'll burn two charges of the Staff of Striking. Okay. And that's going to be another 10. So how much is that total then? 20? I think 10 plus 12, wasn't it? Okay, 22. Okay. And I think that's about all I can do. But I probably got damaged by hitting it in close combat. Yeah. Um, give me 3d6. Unless we can say I used that staff at range or at, at reach. Uh, does it have the finesse property? Uh, it has be able to use it one handed. Finesse. It has reach. Reach. Yeah. Uh, you, you have to close within five feet of it. Okay. So if you're able to hit it from, from 10 feet away, you're okay. Okay. Then we'll say that's what I did instead. Okay. It, it, it may, may, that may not be perfect, but... I understand what you're trying to do. You're aware that it has a warm, warm body. And if you have to get really close to it, you're trying to stay away. So yes. I, I do understand what you're trying to do. It is now the young Remoraz's turn. Uh, and it uh, sees its mommy uh, thing, but it can't see you. Uh, it just I, I, felt no, I tapped. I broke the invisibility. I'm still flying, though. Ah, okay. That's right. It wasn't greater invisibility. It was normal invisibility. Okay, that's fine. So it will uh, it will bite you. Uh, it will fail at that. It will roll an eleven, and I don't think. Okay. That. And then the, it'll be the mana course turn. So let's go back down south. Uh, and again, we're going to. Uh, it has these little. Tail oh, oh I, didn't, I didn't double my dice for that crit, did I? Yeah, but uh, no, you did not. Uh, so that's. Another four, unless we count the, the staff of striking dice. A crit to crit, it, it gets all of the dice that doubles them. Just like okay, the so that's an extra, that's an extra D8 and two extra D6. So. That's an additional 10 plus four, 14. Uh, 14. Okay. Okay, so let's run that one right there. That's what that is. So it's it's also pretty injured. It's 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 not looking to it's not looking that healthy. So the one Rimaraz that uh, is um, sorry not Rimaraz the the Manicor that uh, has been doing its little tail bites at you there, Ethrel. Uh, it's it's going to close up a little bit faster. I mean closer to you and uh, try to um, try to bite you. Uh, and claw you. It gets one bite and one claw. Okay. Is there any advantage since I'm grappled right now? I, I does does grapple give advantage? No. I I, I, I okay. thought it was I, I, restrained gives restrained. advantage, and you have to take an action to do that to a grappled target. Got it. Right. I, I um it, it's it's just you're being held. You're 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 not being restrained. You're yeah. you're, you're being you're being hugged. Like uh, tightly by the uh, vampire, but I, I don't think uh, I don't think it does anything. But that's that's a twenty-two. Does that hit you? Uh, yes, it does. The cloth. Okay. Twenty-one right now. So that's going to be one d eight plus three. So that's going to be with one claw, five hit points of uh, slashing damage, and it's going to try to bite you. And that will not hit you. That's an eight. Ha! Sucker. The other mana core is going to keep on with his little tail strike. 
uh, and try to do another dart at you, Fleming. That's going to be a nat 20. Yeah, so well, that is, yeah, uh, that'll hit. Yeah, that, that, that'll hit. So that's going to be 2d8. That's a one and a six is seven plus three. That's 10 piercing damage. All right. All right, Hockerbeck, your turn. Round three. All right. I will try to be a little bit cooler this time. I will steal wind strike one more time. Uh, so mana core one is going to okay. be a hit with a 26. Um, that is a natural 20. Um, I'm doing the same order. So is it all okay. right to say yeah, Empire? That's yeah. Okay. A natural 20 on her. Uh, and as I do that, I whisper to uh, uh, Ethrold, she prefers to caress before she bites again. And that will be a <laughs> you would know. bardic inspiration to you, sir. Ooh, I don't know what that means. Yes. Um, <laughs> you can add a d10 to one ability check, one attack roll, one saving throw, or because I'm a Valor Bard, you may add it to the AC of your of an attack against you or to a damage roll. Ooh. Five different oh, things. That's pretty awesome, Keep actually. And yeah. then finally, the last Manticore. Is that only one use? Only one use. Okay. Uh, until I give you another one, um, which is a 27. Yep. The last that Manticore. Is. So 6010. We have. 12, we have 16, we have 24, 26, and 36. Um, so 36 to the Manticores and 72 to the Vampress. Damn. 72 hit points damage to the Vampire. Yes, and I will appear behind uh, the Manticore that is attacking... Ethrold at the moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that, that is, is everything gonna I can be, do. That's going to be pretty deadly. One of the, one of the mana cores drops. <laughs> but no the one, one can close, see that. <laughs> the one close to Fleming goes down. One close to Fleming goes down. And okay. that's going to be... And Cathartic does not look great. Cathartic does not look great at all. She looks quite, quite, uh, quite, quite weak at this point, actually. Fleming, your turn. Uh, Cathartic's the vampire, right? Cathartic <laughs> is the vampire. Okay, I will attack the vampire as well using my precision attack. Okay. Um, let me second here. All right. Let that one go. So that is a 27 to hit. That hits. Okay. Uh, D8. Where's the D8? So that'll be nine slashing damage. My second attack is a 28. That will also. All right. Attack hit. Uh, and that'll be 10 slashing damage. And then my bonus action of my hand crossbow, which will be a 25 to hit. Oh, you're rolling good. Yes, that hits. All right. D6. And that is five piercing damage. Not big damage, but damage nonetheless. No, no, no. That's that's actually that's actually quite good. You you notice that 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 she is regenerating every round a little bit. So, so she felt pretty bad. She got there, so so she does regen some of her hit points. Uh, that is that is one thing that you that you did uh, last time is that she took a pretty strong hit there from from, from Hockerbrack. Brought her down pretty good, uh, and she's still injured. She she's still you know you can tell she's hurting. But now with that big you know hit that she took, 
that's when you're starting to notice that her wounds do close up, blood does stop, to, uh, you know, flowing. You can tell that there is some regenerative magic going on. And, you know, none of you guys are clerics or paladins. Um, Hockerbreck, you can probably give me a role for Arcana or religion if you want to see what can possibly stop her, uh, her you know, her type of regeneration. Killing air. Yes, that 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 does sometimes work. Correct. Okay, she will. Um, she will take her mace out that she has, and she will strike twice. Uh, against uh, our uh, our brave, valiant Etherel. Huh. Just want to see her try. Okay, that's going to be a uh, dirty 20, first one. Nope, AC 21. No. And a dirty 25 next time. Fuck yeah, that'll hit. You may add your inspiration roll to upgrade oh, yeah, your AC for this one attack. 1d10? All 1d10. Right. That was an eight. Woo! AC right, 29. So, so she misses. She misses. Yeah. Thanks, invisible person. <laughs> Gosh, I wish Hockerbreck was here to see this ghost helping us. Yeah, yeah that Hockerbreck, that coward. <laughs> hey, like, like we have this so, invisible Goku. So, so two, uh, <laughs> two. <laughs> two swings and two misses. One was really close, but uh, but didn't get it. So, uh, Ethereld, your turn. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to attack her with my hand axe. So, first attack. I say that, I giggle. That was a 24 to hit. Uh, so, that is 10 magical slashing. And then my second attack was a 19 to hit. 19 does not hit. Okay. So, just that 10 damage. Yeah. And you know what? Fuck it. Action surge. Let's do it again. Okay. Ah. There you um, go. So, yeah, that's going to be a mess again. Okay. But you get your whole attack action. If you attack twice on an action surge, it's not just one more attack. Oh, okay. How many attacks around do you get? Two? Two. So, I, well, yep, both of the new attacks miss as well. They are both 14s. Yeah, yeah, th th those will both unfortunately miss. I, mean, I, I do apologize. Damn it. All right. Well, it, that's the way it goes. And in between Etherald and Dunny, she will take her uh, she will take her legendary action to continue to warmly kiss you and um, lick you on your little neck. Uh, okay. That's a legendary action to lick me? Okay. Yes, it is. It is a legendary action to lick you. Oh, she's um, going for the caress again. Watch out for the bite. <laughs> 20, that's going to be a 24. 30, 24. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, um, it, it's, it, it's, it's... I can't hear you. Uh, it's turning it's again. a little bit of damage. Uh, that will be 17 hit points of damage. Okay. Let's see here. 17, that's not bad. No. Dunny. I still have a healing potion. Dunnelly, your turn. Rinse and repeat. I am going to, once again, disengage and keep kiting it back. And I'm going to shoot it twice. Okay. Uh, uh, 18. Whoa, yeah, that's awful. Uh, 18 for one and a 12 for the other. You're on, okay, the 12 does not hit. It takes the- yeah. Oh, no, 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 the 12 does hit. <laughs> yeah, it's right. 22. Ability. Add 10 to that, so it's 22. All right, absolutely. Absolutely, Those, both of those will hit. Oh, God. Yeah, I love that ability. We have, somebody has that ability in our, uh, one of the games I'm in. I play too many games. That's the last one of those, though, so. Ah. Uh, well, no, we're, we're about to take a short rest, so I'll get it back. Really? You're going to rest? You're darn right. You guys Lame. left us. So <laughs> You're not going to help us with your Lame. holy water or radiant damage? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to chill out. Us, not the other way around. That's 10, 20, 
25, 26, 6 is 32, 38 points of damage against that little effer. And that will be enough to kill it. Yeah, we did it. That yeah. will be enough to get it. Just by one hit point, too. That was uh, by one hit point, but uh, but the little the little Rimaraz dies, and um, you were able to do it at range, so you suffer no you suffer no. There is nothing more vile than evil children. Uh, that's is right, that and it was uh, it's uh, you know, Rimarazes are funny. I mean, frost giants look you know search search everywhere for for young Rimarazes so they can train. Uh, they make really good guards uh, for some reason, but uh, but uh, they're. They're nasty. Rimaraz are just nasty, nasty. Benny, your turn. You can choose to rest. You can choose to investigate. Uh, this is a, uh, you know, 80 feet by 50 feet wide, you know, dining room table. Each table is about maybe 15 feet wide. Um, you know, no mesh seating. Uh, so you're not looking at like big chairs, you're looking at little chairs. Quite a few dead bodies of gnomes around. May, a lot of them were half eaten and scored and scorched, and such as that, because you can tell the primaraces have been uh, have been chopping at. Them. Is, there, is there a full head somewhere? A what? Is there one with an intact head somewhere? Yes, there is. I want to go talk to it. The 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 head. Yes. Of the of the of the gnome. Yes. Okay. Preferably one that looks more on the elaborate side, but look, looks more done up. Okay, I need to roll for that. Okay, perception or investigation. No, no I, I need to roll for that. I, I rolled a nat one. So, so the most done up you're going to find, uh, these are all basically cooks and servants. Around this okay, room. no, that's fine. I'll talk to the help. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I am right. going to effectively uh, land with the dead. I, 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 I am landing and casting speak with dead on it. Okay. Okay. Landing and casting speak with dead. All right. So what would you like to ask uh, before I head down uh, to the, to the next turn? Um, let's, let's get your question ready. Uh, so, um, and then next turn we'll have an answer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, okay, so first of all, uh, you've seen me do this once before, Dunley, so if there's anything you want to know, chime in. I have no idea. I'm not good at asking questions. Okay. Uh, then I, what is it, five? Where's the exit? Huh? Where's the exit? I mean, were we even oh, We know came in through the exit. I know that's what it's going to say. What's that? I, we came in through the exit. That's true. No. <laughs> And that's the other thing. Do we, we, were we even know where the hell the rest of them went? Well, uh, there's bloody. We know that they went the way we didn't go. There were only so many, so many right. directions that we could have headed. Uh, I, but I want to know one how it died. Uh, yeah. Two, uh, what it knows of the undeath that has been spreading throughout here. Uh, three, because I have to always, I, 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 I decided this early on, I have to burn one of my questions to ask if there's a message it wants to pass on. Oh, that's a good one. That's uh, a real question. Four, uh, does it know of any way or anyone or any rumor or any, is there any way that it might be able to, any information it might be able to give us to help uh, escape here? Because I would okay. imagine it would, be, it would be familiar with the layout of the keep that we're in. So I'm essentially asking for a map or okay. like preferably with an X with some treasure marks on it for Dunley because Benny okay. is not going to loot. Uh, <laughs> and five, uh, I want to know uh, if the spirit has, well, no, if the spirit doesn't know, the spirit doesn't know it's dead. Um, you can um, think about it for a while if you want yeah, to come let back. Come, let me come back to number yeah. five. Yeah, that's no yeah. problem at all. That's no problem at all. So the, uh, the, the manicure that is still alive that, uh, 
uh, is the one next to cathartic. Uh, it, it's pretty injured. It's, it's kind of on its, on its last legs as well. Uh, and it's going to turn its attention to, to Ethereal and uh, it will try to bite Ethereal. And that's going to be a two that will miss. And it will try to claw you. And that is going to be a dirty 20. I think it no. needs a 21 to hit you, right? Correct. That's right. Okay. Then we're back at the top of the order uh, with Harkerbrecht. Your turn. All right. I'm just going to cut down this manticore the old-fashioned way by stabbing it in the back. Uh, that is a... Oh, no, I'm not doing the magic. I'm just cutting it. Right. Nah, I'm sorry, because it's different. Uh, 24? 23. That'll hit. Okay. That'll hit. And 26, so I assume that'll hit as well. That'll hit as well. Yes, they will. Both hit. Okay. That is... Five, nine, and uh, 11 damage total, two of it being fire, and, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I'm right. Uh, that, that will be enough to kill it. That will be enough to kill it. It was really on its last legs. Do you mind if I switch that last attack over to? Sure you can. Sure you can. Okay. No problem. Do you want me to re-roll or... Just use the over twenty roll I had. It, the you, you're 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 going to need to reroll. Okay. Yes, you're short, and I put the candy up high. Sucks to be you. Um, oh, that'll miss actually for her. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that will miss for her. And I will uh, give another inspiration to um, Ethereal because he apparently needs it. Yes. Awesome. Good. There you go. Fleming, your turn. Um, where is this manticore? The, both manticores are dead. <laughs> That's right. He just killed it. Yep. Both manticores so, are dead. So just the vampire left? Just the vampire left. Hmm. All right, well, let's let's just go at her good old-fashioned battle axe. So we got an 18, which I'm sure misses, and, a, misses. and a 28. 28 hits. Yes. Oops, that's not a D8. That'll be 10 slashing damage. Now my bonus action... That'll be a 22. Uh, no, that sorry. Hits. Sorry, that was an eight, uh, 17, which misses. Yeah, that'll miss. So, so, so how much damage did you do? 10 slashing. Okay. Seven. All right. You got this, guys. All right. <laughs> you guys, yeah, y'all may have it. Yeah, One second. I, I, uh, give me a second while I read because the uh, the distance is the the uh, print is kind of small. Hold on one second. I have to read this to make sure because and I'm going to turn my head so you guys won't be able to hear me. Hold on one second while I read because the print. Wait, was that you're turning away? I'm just joking. <laughs> no problem, man. I'm going to lay very on. So I just checked. All right. Brain. I yeah. Mistake. It will. It will cast a spell. It, it thinks it's in. Uh, it, it, it thinks it's in some danger, uh, and it will cast a spell. It can't see you. Still can't see you, Hawker Brad. <laughs> 
So it's going to be against uh, either Fleming or Ethereld. That's going to be against Ethereld. Give me a constitution saving throw, Ethereld. All righty. That is a 12. You can add your bardic inspiration. Yes, you can. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> it is an 18. 18 is just enough, so you only take half damage from this. What? What, what is it? It's going to be necrotic damage. Ah. He cast a spell called Harm on you, and uh, so Ouch. it's good. Yeah, that's, that's going to be... Oh, that'll be... 32 hit points of damage, necrotic, 32 necrotic damage. Half? No, that is the half. Oh, yeah, that's a a big boy. That's a big damage tick. Oh, that is. Ow. But you're still up. I'm still up because I used second wind earlier. So I'm at 19 (laughs) points out of 100. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. You you absolutely definitely needed that. Ethereal, your turn. Uh, wow. Um, can you drink a healing potion as a bonus action? We have been, we have been playing your mind where he were yeah. bonuses, so yeah. Okay, uh, so I have this potion of greater healing. What is, what is that? What does that do? It looks like 44 plus 4. I'm going to do it's one. It's longer more. than, it's more than 44. Uh, right. I'm, I'm, I'm reading D&D Beyond. It's just 44 plus 4 is what it says for the potion of greater healing. Greater, yeah, I think it's forty-four. I can check the DM the DM book if you want. It's right behind me. That sucks. Four D four. Yeah, I think it's it's two Plus. four. Then it goes up to I think ten, and then twenty or something like that. Plus I sixteen. Two, I thought it was two four eight. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, it, it, it doubles right, well. and then it skips the crap. All right. Well, if, if that's what it says, that's what it says. I always did, you know. I always. Did it was a D six and not a D four. That's All that's right. that's where my thing is. But if, it's like, but if we if we want to rule it because this is typically how we would do it. If we want to rule it forty four no ones. All right. Yeah. Forty four no ones. That's fine. Forty four no ones. Okay. Uh. So I get seventeen hit points back. Woo. Okay. Seventeen hit points back. All righty. And that and then I'm gonna use my attacks. Okay. And my first attack is a 29 to hit. That's hit. I would hope so. Um, and that is eight damage from my magic hand axe. Your magic hand axe. Yeah. And then my second attack is going to be a 19 to hit. That is not going to ah. be a hit. All right. That's fine. Okay. And in between... Uh, it's legendary action between Ethereld and Dunny. Uh, I'm not going to automatically come after you, Ethereld. I'm going to make it. Ru- I'm going to make it roll because now it has a choice between between who's going to do this. Let me came in and closed the uh, the uh, distance, and that is a one, two, three. So that is going to be Fleming this time. And this time, Fleming. Uh, she releases you from the grapple. Ethereld um, turns and uh, sees her new suitor. A dashing young dwarf named Fleming. And uh I'm not dashing, but all right. <laughs> all right. And let's do um let's do that that'll be a dirty twenty-one. Fleming, does that get you? Okay. Yeah. She has a really high bonus for the for that thing. She's really strong. I do She's not have much health left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's going to be. You would have waited for the goddamn cleric. Sixteen hit points of damage to to you. Um, um, okay, that's good. That's yeah, good. sixteen hit points of damage. None of that but, is poison by any chance, is it? No, none of it's poison. All right. So it's pretty much like you know, piercing and necrotic. Yeah, right. Fair that's enough, that's fair where enough. the majority of it is. Only and um, Benny, you guys are both out of. Uh, so I'm going to reduce your uh, your um, initiative back to zero. Yeah, I'm taking uh, the initiative order. 
and you um, let's let's try to think on your answers to your question that you had. Okay. It, yeah, your first was kind of. I might have a follow. I might have a follow up. Right. So how did it die? It died defending uh, its, uh, it, died, it died defending its dog uh, and does not did know like if it's- or, Did this look like a lady or a dude? Looked like a lady, looked like a lady. Uh, when you said like someone done up, it was a servant, but uh, you so it did have its hair up, so. And, and it was the style at the time. It was, it's quite- of the time, exactly. Uh, I wouldn't call it fashion, I'd just call it what it is. But yes, it unfortunately died. Um, it died defending its uh, its um, it's a daughter. Um, just, where just everyone like else is, else. yeah, j just 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 like where everyone else is. Um, he said that there he saw uh, her leader, um, um, Ferdok and Gylar, uh, being dragged. Uh, by this hellish looking creature with chains all over it, uh, chains oh. around its neck uh, that were being, it was dragged and, and behind it uh, were, were, these other, the, were these other creatures uh, that looked like frogs and um, strangest thing. Can I get a religion what? check to, can I get a religion check? Cause that sounds like an infernal creature. Yes, you may. You can go ahead and roll. Yes, if you know what that is. I do not. Okay. <laughs> you know, is that a, is that is that a well hey, no, that, that, that creature? Was of, that was a total of eight. Yeah. No, you 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 won't know that. Um, it just and that's because its, it's description is that you know just some tall looking creature with red skin and it, it, it's carrying chains. Uh, and it had its neck wrapped up around, and behind so it were these two. We're after the dungeoneer. Yeah, after the dungeoneer, and um, or a jailer, or, or something along those lines. Uh, two frog um, creatures were behind it. Uh, and one of them, flames started erupting out of its out of its claw, and and that's how she thinks. She, she doesn't remember anything. The next thing she remembers. Sitting here looking and talking to you. Uh, but that's the only thing that uh, that's one thing that, uh, that, that that she remembers about where everyone else is, that she was hiding behind these trying to protect her daughter. She saw, you know, her leader being dragged in chains away. Um, kind of you know, kind of looks off. Meaning yeah. Meaning yeah. the head cook. Yeah. Being okay. Yeah. Uh, I would say, I would, I would say that's probably, that's probably said. You're in. She, she nods off to the fact, uh, like, like Ming hauled off course towards the kitchen and the tails, because that's, that's, that's where we keep that. Ming hauled off towards the, towards the, towards the cooking and Jalen area, uh, which you know is going to be kind of where the Rimraz was from, in the far wall, kind of off about sixty feet away against the far wall to your left. Is where she's kind of looking off the distance that she saw her uh, her, her chieftain being uh, being carried in chain uh, carried off in chains. Um, that being said, um, any messages that she has um, that she knows that towards the far southeast, there's a secret door where she thinks a lot of their uh, a lot of the other people got out because that's been that, that's a protected place. Um, the, uh, the the clerics of the village always keep that uh, as a as a holy area, as a holy uh, hallowed uh, section of the uh, lair uh, that's always going to be safe. That leads them to a to a special little you know sanctuary, and you have like little engravings of um, you know Garl uh, Garl Glittergold, uh, who's the um, uh, gnomish uh, deity, uh, you know, curved onto the walls, and she points. Uh, this like little area in the wall to where you know you can see you didn't notice it before but just about maybe that high is like a little figurine you know into the wall uh, that's been kind of carved out into the wall and she said you can follow those and that will lead you you know to our to our exit to our to our secret path out because uh, that gets out to your you know next question Rumors about how to help escape. Well, well by, by message that she wants to pass along, I was uh, Betty was meaning more towards to to the survivors. To any 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 still attached to the earthly realm, but is there any message for 
she just she, she just wants to know she, she wants to know uh if, if you find her daughter uh then uh that you know that um, um it, it's that that mommy's okay that's all she knows and she that, kind that's of also the message that the last one gave you <laughs> yeah <laughs> so sad. Okay. What, what, what is her name and what is her daughter's name okay her name is um ethel okay ethel her uh, daughter's name is I think which Get up that random name generator. No, actually it's not. <laughs> I, it, it, it's it's not a I, I have some of these uh, there's a you know, thing that's Tim. <laughs> an is it is it is it an enchanter? I, I played Tim in one shot. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's Dela. 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 One, Ethel and Dela. Oh, Ethel and Dela. Got that, got that noted down. Ethel and Dela. Okay. Okay. So you guys are at a uh, you guys um, are but, but, at a combat. But you were about to, you were about to follow up with the with the thought that 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 secret door led into the the question about the layout. Yeah. So so basically. Um, what she's saying is that if you follow this hallway you, and you can start seeing little areas along the walls, maybe each 10 feet apart, we see these little figurines carved out into the walls that kind of lead down into an area that, that looks like, you can tell this is a, like a, almost like a dormitory. Where you have, you know, square walls and then door, then 10 feet door, 10 feet door, 10 feet door. So you can tell it's some type of living quarters, uh, and along the line you can kind of see like a, like a little pathway where where you think you. So so is is it is it fair to say that I now have knowledge of the full map that you sent? I would say so. Yes, I would say okay. at least um, you know that the uh, that the area to the to where you're at right now. This is the common dining hall. To your left is where the kitchen and the jails are. Right is where they're. Um, the um, uh, beds and the and the living quarters are, and you know that there's a path to get from there across the across a chasm, and then from there uh, out to a out to a secret door. Okay. Okay, Doc. Okay. Um, do you have anything else I, you would my, like my, to my, do? My final follow up, though, because I, I I would would have been. Does she know specifically what goes on in the dungeons where the head chef was being taken? Um, she 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 doesn't know that that's where they keep um, visitors who come and piss off the king. You know that's that's where they uh, they uh, keep uh, or disorderly gnomes who get too drunk. You know, they go sleep it off. And they tell them to work in the kitchen, and then they have to sleep it off in the jail. Okay, you know, it's not necessarily is, a torture chamber. It's more no, of a drunk no, no. Tank. This is this is more okay. of a drunk tank. Yeah, work in the kitchens, peel potatoes, and spend the night in the drunk tank. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They're they're very efficient like that. You know why 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 keep uh, why keep someone uh, you know who's drunk and kind of messed up a little bit? You know why just keep them? You know why not put them to work in the kitchens? Okay, that's, that, that, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. Okay. I, I'll, you know, Viacon via via Mama. Viacon Mama. So Ethel fades away, the consciousness leaves her face, and now a pale gray uh, sheen now coats over the eyes. And it's Hockerbreck's turn right as you get up. Hey, wait a minute. I appreciate that. I know. I'm, I was just messing up there. Actually, this, if you, uh, you got to go do something, if you got to go do something, <laughs> actually, it's. It's Dunny's turn. That was um, oh, okay. That was uh, <laughs> Dunny. What would you like to do during that I'll, during during that communal time? I want to search around and loot the room. Okay, search around and loot the room. What would you like for a check? I will ask. Give me, an, give me an investigation check since okay. you're actively My looking. Investigation is so great. It's perception actually. It's better. Now, if you find a tranny, let me know because we have to, we, we the debate on that is still out. What is? Oh, if you find if you find a tranny, the check on that is still the the, the, the jury's still out on that one. All right. Well, I rolled a fourteen, so that's not too bad. 
No, actually, that's not too bad. And um, the most interesting thing that you find uh, is, uh, um, you know, when the Remoraz died, uh, it had some nervous twitches and it spit up uh, a few um, disgorged bodies and remains of a few um, of the gnomes. However, also a couple of a uh, couple of gold um, uh, necklaces uh, that you think they're kind of covered in some grime right now. But uh, but but some pretty nice ones inlaid with gems, uh, and uh, one of them seems to have like um, uh, uh, on a chain is a ring with a signet that you can tell that you can tell it's like um, it's like a signet ring. Um, yeah. Very very pretty. Very very pretty. Do I know what that's of? Um, no, you don't know what it's from, but um, you know you can tell by the ornateness of the uh, of the um, of the necklace that it's on. Is there's there's two necklaces, um, and you know one of them is bigger than the other, okay? But and the one that's bigger is one that has uh, that has a little chain coming down, and it's like a little, you know, a, a ring hanging, you know, dangling from it with the signet on it, um, and the no, signet is of it. No idea what it is. It's it's a spear. Um, um, you can see, you know, this is one of these things that if you melt it in wax and do it, right. you know, yeah, it, it's it's that type of thing. And the shape is of a is of a spear, but 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 it doesn't look like an orc spear. And it looks like a well crafted spear, and um, you know, it looks it's it's nice. It's 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 a it's a nice little thing. It looks like this probably belonged to a noblewoman, or a uh, or a or an or an official of some type. But it's kind of covered in muck, so it would take a little while for you to clean it up. That's fine. I will. Well, remember, I'm going to be here for a bit while um, Benny's doing that spell. And actually, I'll show it to Benny when Benny's when Benny's done, and I've cleaned it up a bit. Okay. Hey, you happen to know what the signet is? Do you? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, the the the. The best idea that you can that you can come up with. I mean, it looks. Well, no, no, I I, I want to cast legend lore on it. Yeah, he's actually got a plan. Okay, well, well let's let's do that next yeah, time. Yeah, get, that's, get that's why I was wasting yeah. you from or help saving you from wasting your. Yeah, no problem. So now it is Hockerbeck's turn, but I need to take a quick uh, two minute bio break. Okay, so let's take a quick two minute bio break. It is eight eighteen. Let's get back here at eight twenty while I run to the bio. Okay. Hi, everybody. Okay. This uh, episode of Murder, Inc. Incorporated is brought to you by HelloFresh. Right now, my wife is making a penne with pork meatballs. Unfortunately, she's terrible at cooking, so I'm doing that while helping. <laughs> oh, God. HelloFresh, for when you want to try and pretend to cook, but have your husband do it instead. And we're also brought to you by... Uh, some whiskey on a shirt. I think it's honey whiskey. I don't remember, but I wasn't paying attention, so. Not done. Jack Daniels, Tennessee honey. Nothing we're sweeter than Tennessee honey. Wait, we're not speaking. Nothing's better than talking over Carol while having a glass of Tennessee honey. Not done, who are you? Whiskey. Okay. Not done, who are you? If they haven't sponsored us by
That's right, guys. Hello, fresh. Enjoy <laughs> your <laughs> meals the day. It's when you like to smear poop on yourself. Google it. Let's save search off. Well, I mean, I don't do that all the time. It's just, you know. Just with chickens. That, that wasn't a judgment call. It was, it was an FYI. It was the more you know. That's the bum, bum, bum. Yes, that's right. The more you know. So we will start back. Google it. You are supposed to make a few meatballs. I'm going to put myself on mute. Wait, no, I okay. play right now. Okay. Yeah, Harker, it is am, your turn. I'm going to... Go for the... Ooh, phone I am going to go with uh, uh, a wisdom saving throw, please. Uh-huh. As I say, you know, I thought we were quite stiff together. Turns out it was all you, as I viciously mock her. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to be a wisdom saving throw? Yes, it is. Oh, she's a cleric, though. This is going to suck for me. Yeah. Well, no, she rolled really low. She failed that saving throw. Ah, uh, that is a uh, seven psychic damage. And because my banter was so witty, I am going to inspire everyone's essentially surrounding her and gangbanging her at this yes. moment, right? Inspiration. She still has disadvantage, right? Huh? She still gets disadvantage, right? Correct. Um, I'm Bardic Inspiration uh, Fleming this time. Sorry, we're there. changing things up, Bethrold. Oh. Um, sorry. Let me throw that dice away, man. Mockery, yeah. Disadvantage on the next attack roll is for Disadvantage on her next attack roll. Okay. That's right. Now massage that meat really good. Did you put the water in there? Okay. Fleming, your turn. (laughs) I will attack. Wait. Yeah, the, the van... Why am I yeah. thinking of attack? Yeah, okay. The vamp is still around. The vamp's still around. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, That's fired. Uh, where's my other D twenty? There you go. All right. So we got a twenty three and a twenty nine. Both will hit. Uh, let me check here. Where do my dead? Oh, my God, I'm blind today. Uh, 15 plus 12. 37. 27. And then my little crossbow thing. That'll be a 22. Ah, 17. 17. Sorry, it doesn't hit. 17 does not hit. You may add your D10 inspiration dice if you wish. Oh, well, why not? Let's try that. D10. Where's my D10? Oh, shit, that's hot. And that would make it a 27. Yep, that'll hit. And that'll be three piercing damage. (laughs) (laughs) That was worth it. Well, that 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 really gets her pretty bad. Uh, you know, she's 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 hurting. She's she's regenerating, but you're you're putting it you're putting it up against her. You really really are. There's no doubt about it. Um, and now she uh, grabs that that mace she has again of hers, and she will uh, she will attack. Um, she has disadvantage on, on the, the first, first attack roll. Correct. Yep. Okay. Disadvantage on the first attack roll. We'll see who she's going to go after. One, two, three, Fleming. Four, five, six, Etherell. Four, five, six, Etherell. Etherell, that disadvantage. So that's going to be a four plus 12 equals 16. 16. That no. will not hit you. No E gap. And the next one is going to be against Fleming. <laughs> well, I'm going to roll again. Yeah, it's against Fleming. That is that's a dirty thirty. I, I I think that'll hit. 
At 30? Yeah. No, that misses. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, sorry. Sorry, it wasn't 30. It was a 29. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, that, that still hits nonetheless. So give me a uh, wisdom saving throw, please. Oh, great. Ooh, a good old six. <laughs> yeah, so you are frightened of her now. Oh, time to run away. Yeah, you are frightened. Uh, that mace, when it hits you, um, this wave of, of, of terror um, just kind of permeates through you and like sends this wave of revulsion. And you look at her like she's the most fearsome thing in the entire world. Uh, as well as taking 15 hit points of damage. Gotcha. Bludgeoning, 15 bludgeoning. And we will then go to Ethereld's turn. Ethereld. Woo, let's attack this Vampress with my hand axe. Let's do this. First attack is a 12 to hit. So miss. Second attack, 15 to hit. I rolled the two and a five, and I get plus ten. <laughs> yeah, that 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 will that will not be enough, uh, and it will do its one legendary action. Uh, I die, and that's a nat twenty against um, four, five, six Ethereld. So this will be how many? Uh, five. Um, and that is going to be 1d4 plus 3d6, so that's 1d8 2. It's this many dice. Oh, that's fine. I'm fine. Okay, there's 10, 13, 21. I would like to dimension door out of this whole place. <laughs> That's going to be 32 hit points of damage. Oh, yeah. Good thing I uh, drank that healing potion because I'm down to four hit points. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that that was um, and you're you're grappled again. But uh, but that's it doesn't really it just gets your movement down to zero. But that's. That's uh, that's all it's going to do. Oh, that's and then, fine. I wasn't planning on fleeing. Yeah, uh, that's true. Um, so, uh, uh, Benny and and Denny, what would you all like to do now? You um. So I, I I'm casting legend lore on it, and then as you describe what I'm relaying back to her, we're walking and talking while I'm following the path that uh, that uh. uh that's at Ethel it, uh, described to the sacred, okay. sacred place. Yeah, so so you can see a pretty clear marking as you move your move down this uh, mm -hmm. these pathways. You eventually run into, uh, and I'm assuming Dunny that you also want to follow yeah. her. Yeah, you, we're staying with her. You, you yeah, run into. Yeah, no, no, we're, we're pulling a full Aaron Sorkin West Wing. We're walking, yeah. talking, walking. Yeah, so. You run into a pretty clear blood trail, actually, right about where um, where some of these things along the lines of the figurine. Uh, if you're following the map map uh, that I sent you, you can move all the way to the northeast corner, um, and then you see a set of doors, and then it start, starts kind of moving along the far eastern wall. Um, there, there's a blood spatter about every 10 feet that you can kind of see following your way around uh, until you see uh, the, the corridor turn into a natural corridor, um, uh, like a natural cave that ends in the same place that uh, you find your friends found out to the very, very edge of a, um, of a cavern uh, and a chasm, a large chasm. But differently, you notice that the blood trail ends and you see um, a very, um, now that you notice about those little um, figurines of Carl Glittergold, you see two of them on either side of a, uh, of a, of, um, of a panel 
what what looks like you're in a natural cavern, but you kind of realize that this you see this area that's carved out and and it's quite noticeably now that you kind of see the edge of it that the that the that the two figurines are marking the edge it it looks to be a a panel instead of just natural stone and you think this is probably the secret door that leads out to the hollowed area or to the to the sacred area and i'll leave it right there because it would take you about you know 10 maybe not 10 minutes maybe five minutes uh, you, know, you know, to get to that point, and so I need to then go back down to our, to our well, combat. Well, but, but while we were doing that, I was also describing the legend lore I had cast on that on that. Okay. Yeah, too dummy. So, so that you cast the legend lore in this, and this is the ceremonial um, necklace that the wife of the of the um, chieftain of of this tribe of gnomes. Um, it's it's her ceremonial necklace. This comes actually all the way from the from the from the Valley of the Mage, which is a series of um, um, it's a valley in between the uh, the barrier peaks and um, some of the other kingdoms. So quite a long ways away, um, but that's where this colony of gnomes originated from. And so this that that spear uh, is actually a spear of the of the House of Gnomes. That were in service to the to the to the um, mage of the veil. Vale. So this kind of goes back to the lore of many many thousands of years about how the valley elves originated and how the mage of the veil vale came to be. You know, you're, you're you're all this. The spell is coming to you about. You're hearing all this legend. Uh, basically, a group of of uh, elves and a group of gnomes. Came to inhabit this area they called the called the called the Valley of the Mage, uh, and one mage was kind of put in charge of it. Uh, they were both the the gnomes were given uh, the the symbol of their house was the spear, the symbol of the house of the Valley Elves was a bow, and um, this is a signet uh, of that of that house of that house banner of that house uh, insignia. So you know that originally these gnomes came from the uh, from the Valley of the Mage. You don't know why the hell they ended up in the Southern Utils. It's a long, long way, but nonetheless, <laughs> that is kind of a big deal. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 a, they're a fairly old noble set, and they're they're pledged to uh, to uh, defend uh, whoever is the head head the the head motherfucker in charge of the valley of the mage whoever the chief mage is or the chief you know wizard of that of that valley they are pledged to their service so what for whatever reason that means this is that's what the signet is and this necklace belongs normally to the wife of the chieftain or the chieftain you know um so you can only think of the worst that how it ended up in the belly of a remoraz but yeah. um that's, it that's basically. Her. It was still on one of them, wasn't it? No, this was yeah, regurgitated. No, this after. was coughed up by the Remoraz. Yeah, this was. Because you said the up. bodies that came out with it, so I was like thinking, well, maybe. Yeah, the but they were they were just bits of. It's hard to distinguish anything at that point because you know, like I said, <laughs> yes, there was. Yeah, hey. they, they they had been. There was nothing identifiable. This just came up in a in a regurgitation. Ugh. I'm, so, I'll, I'll hand it back to Dunley and I'll say, I would really prefer that you don't try and hawk that. If you're going to, let me buy it off of you, please. Um, sure, I'll give it to the notes. We will, we'll figure that out later, but for the time I, being, I would really prefer you not get rid of that. I'm not going to get rid of it. Okay. Hey, you get any healing? Uh, just a Go second. Back. I think we're about to a place where I'm going to be able to be more effective. Okay, cool. Okay, Hockerbrick, your turn. Lovely. Uh, Lemon is terrified. Ethereal right. is horribly wounded. Yes. I am invisible. You're doing great. I am surprisingly <laughs> doing great. <laughs> doing wonderful. Um, how is cathartic looking? I'm pretty weak right now. Pretty weak. Pretty weak? Okay. Um... I'm going to attack twice. Um, 19 on the die. 
Sorry, dear. 19 on the die again. I will help you out shortly. Well, well, well with any bonuses, you'll hit with both of those. You only yes. need a plus two. Yeah. Um, so total is 10, 9, 19, plus 8 is 27. Seven. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And inspire um, Ethril this time. Yes. And I am going to mute myself here. And she goes poof into a cloud of gas. Wait, yes. She's, oh. she's a gas? Wait, did that mean we went one or... Well, she you you where you used to see her, she's now a cloud of a, a gaseous cloud looking for a coffin that's in the corner. And it races over to the coffin and kind of crawls up in there and the gas then disappears into the coffin. I immediately want to bust open that coffin. Can I do that? Okay. Yes, you can. You can bust open the coffin. All right. You see a sleeping comatose body of the of the vampire that you just uh, slain, completely out. I'm eyes closed. I'm gonna take the wooden stake that you put in my pack, and I'm going to jam it through its heart. Okay. If a piercing a vampire a weapon made is delivered into the vampire's heart while the vampire is incapacitated in the resting place. It is paralyzed until the stake is removed. So it is paralyzed in place and cannot regenerate. It needs to be drawn out. You need to take this thing out to the light in order to kill it permanently, but it cannot move. Okay, that's fine. Well, now that it's immobilized, I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna drink my other healing potion and uh, okay. loot loot the vampire. And, the and you guys, you guys are out of combat. So I will take yeah. you guys out of combat. Um, y'all lived through that, which was, which was surprising to me, but, uh, but, but no, you guys actually did pretty well. Um, um being invisible. Shit, it sounds like we had it worse off than the big bad. <laughs> well, I, 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 bone I, devils. I, I, I did take out the two barb devils, the two barb devils would have, would have, would have done it in for you. They had like 36 turn of, you know, hurl flame and, you know. That would have been that would have been pretty nasty, but um, but so so we're out of combat. You immediately noticed that that uh, that that mace that she had was a really nice mace. Ooh. Really nice. <laughs> yeah, because I um, fucking hate my hand axe. Yeah, um, it, it's it, it's a nice one. Um, you know, obviously very ornate, um, and her and her armor was is pretty is pretty high quality as well. Um, so. Um, she, whenever she went gaseous, her armor and the mace just dropped to the floor. So when she was in a gaseous cloud, when she reanimated inside the coffin, she was basically, I don't want to say naked, but she was just in the garments that you would wear, you know, just sheets and such as that, right? Fairly, Got it. fairly in, in undergarments, so to say. So there is a very, there's an exquisite, Full chain, uh, sorry, full plate mail lying on the ground, uh, as well as a very nice mace. Cool. Sounds good. Hawker Brex, nice Fleming, mace. how are you guys doing now that we killed the vampire? Uh, or I'm immobilized perfectly beast. fine. We paralyzed the vampire. I'm, uh, I'm, I could use a bit of healing, but I'm okay. There? I'm sorry. Um, Scott, I kind of missed that. Vampire burst into mist and flew away or is still vampire there? burst into mist flew away to a coffin that was in the corner um then when you busted up the coffin she was re she was there but you know in a in a comatose state incapacitated um ethereal staked her which is gonna you know hold her to the place that she won't be able to move you gotta you gotta take her out to the sun for her to be destroyed utterly but she cannot move. She is paralyzed, incapacitated, and not regenerated. Yay. Yay. And the sun has not been shining here in how long? <laughs> in the <laughs> caves, specifically. <laughs> yeah, you, or you could cast a daylight spell if someone has a daylight spell. Uh, I, I'm going to wait until our cleric shows up. Yeah. After I'm gonna loot the room first, obviously, but then I'll yeah. Wait until yeah. Well, the, you you uh, you you 
the hunt second here because there are a few other items of note that uh, that that I'll find. Let me uh, let me pull up the storyline and we'll get on this all on here. One second. I, I also want to uh, pull out my sledgehammer and check for hidden doors. <laughs> okay, give me. Um, I will help him three, out. Give but me nicely. Three, give me three. <laughs> um, first of all, give me a, an investigation check, and then give me three strength. Ah, uh, investigation. Okay, that's a sixteen. Okay. If you did not use that uh, inspiration, you could add that to that roll currently. Oh, yeah. Fuck it. Let's do that, too. Um, that's a 17. <laughs> <laughs> Always love it when that rolls a one. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. Okay, hold, get, get, give me just a second. I got to find the, the chieftain's... Trying to find while you this. do that, I'm gonna roll a pair of cure wounds for these guys. Um, Fleming, you can take 23 points of healing back. Ethrold, you can take uh, 26 points of healing back. Yay! Okay, so in your investigations, there, Ethrold, you're kind of you know banging on the back of the walls there and such, and you do I'm hear a hollow I'm just swinging my sledgehammer about every is, couple of feet is, against the wall. This is what the investigation role was at. You know, you're, you're, you're checking and checking, and you hear a hollow area, and the hollow area lets you know that there is something behind that wall. You can't see anything. You don't know anything. But by banging it, instead of just hitting solid rock, you hear a hollow section, and then you start swinging harder and you find out, sure enough, a little, let's say, a 20 by 20 foot section, um, and the floor of that is covered in, covered in gold and silver and platinum copper pieces. Uh, you think at least three to 4,000 gold pieces, um, maybe another two to 3,000 silver pieces, um, maybe several hundred platinum pieces interspaced as well a couple of diamonds, several emeralds, a couple of very valuable looking jade figurine, uh, platinum bracelets, uh, and um, you know maybe some topazes as well. Lots of gold and gems. So basically the treasury of the tribe. Oh, I'm gonna pocket some of the platinum pieces. And, okay, uh, okay. And maybe a little bit of gold so I have some spending money. You might want to bring me a diamond. The diamond oh. may help, yeah. Oh yeah, I'll pocket some of the diamonds and emeralds and stuff too. I, as much as I can carry, obviously. Yeah, well, um, you know, um, and the, the, Clemen, the, the, the diamond want, about the size of your fist. Okay. Oh, Fleming, do you want this plate, the magical plate that she dropped? Uh, I, I kind of want the mace. I don't, I don't know where Akerbrecht is. Again, yeah, I, I appeared I mean, to heal you, but screw you guys. Oh, <laughs> you be okay, Akerbrecht. Fill your pockets, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Well, Fleming, uh, it, it, it's a pretty exquisite full plate. You know, it's 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 really nice. It's, uh, as you start uh, fingering it and looking at it and such as that, you notice and trying on the arms, you notice that it's... Fingering it, I heard it. He's fingering it. You, you notice that just by trying on a few little pieces, it just automatically sizes itself to you. You know, it mm. says, oh, that's kind of, that's kind of nice. You know, it used to be on a chick and now it looks like this was just made for me. You know, it's, okay. it's, 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 awesome it's, it's actually it's, got these two pockets in the front. Great for holding extra gold. Or a couple of <laughs> Very manly. <laughs> Very manly. Very manly. All right. So, so, um, y'all are looting through the area there, Dunny and Benny. Um, y'all very easily can see now that this is a secret door. And they do they up. hear the loud smashing of my sledgehammer? Yeah, do we? Uh, actually, that's a good point. Why don't you uh, why don't you guys roll um, a perception check? God, I got terrible. That oh god, all of us. Uh, that's a sixteen plus. You hear it? Uh, three nineteen. I rolled a seven. 
Well, you're in the same room, Fleming. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely. Hey, I roll a natural okay. one. I don't hear any of this sledgehammer going on. Roll a la 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 la. <laughs> you're just mesmerized. What did you roll, Dunny? I rolled a nat one with a minus one. <laughs> okay, yeah, you don't hear anything, Benny. Benny, what'd you roll? Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Well, you you um you you don't hear you just hear like a buzzing sound in your ear that you know that just my my radiance and and your indebtedness to me for resurrecting yes. you is just overwhelming it is it, just kind of kind of knocking the cobwebs out of being brought back to death you you know brought back to life and being dead you know still can't get this ringing out of your ear it's kind of hard <laughs> to pick up just the sounds for some reason yeah her perception and her Investigation to me for rogue are shite. <laughs> well, you're just not just, the most perceptive one rogue. What are the, the fun little little kinks? Minus <laughs> one to perception, so that roll was a zero. <laughs> that's oh, that's God. that's what I'm getting. That's why I'm giving you a buzz in your head that you can't see. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? So Benny, you you hear uh, in the uh, in the background uh, as you um. Specifically, what background? Forward or backward or echoing? When I say in the background, what I'm saying is that you, when you open up this door, the secret door to see this north-south hallway, okay, you can hear the echo to your south of something banging, banging, and then hear what's what sounds like you know a wall being being taken down, and it's like an echo. We are entering the area from the north, and they're entering it from the south. Yeah, what what you uh what you see is that um you can hear because it's like I said, it ends up following almost uh creating like a little echo chamber. Uh mm-hmm. and about maybe two hundred feet to the south, uh the uh the sound is being funneled right at you because you can't go anywhere. Right. Um do, do you do you wish to follow the sound of this uh well, of can this? I, can I, can I, I, no, I, I don't really care about the sound. I, I, I'm more interested in getting into this this hollowed area that I was that I, that was explained to me. Right. So so basically, once you kind of poke your head into this to this corridor to you, to pick out this sound, you become overwhelmed with this with this sense of good and, uh, can and you hear sacred. Me? Yes, it's just like just like you know, it, everything feels right and good and proper maybe a little bit alien in that this is dedicated to a different god however it is a good aligned god it's uh, it's one that's on the same side as you guys but just more aligned towards the non-human the uh, more aligned to the known encourage Den- 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 to come over to me and we're going to join hands and i'm going to sing kumbaya as i cast a prayer of healing okay, so you'll get double um, max uh, healing for your for your prayer of healing while in the hollow. Okay, so you're going to take back. That's going to be. I was doing it at third level, so that's going to be three d eight plus three. So that's twenty four plus three is twenty seven. You'll take back uh, fifty four. Fifty four hit points. I think that puts me at max. But that's going to take ten minutes. So they're basically going yeah. to find us. Yeah. So yeah, that puts me back to max. That's good. That's good. Okay. Um, our intrepid uh, vampire killers down to the I suppose south. if anyone were to interrupt me, I could also, uh, that, that would also spill over onto them. Yeah. I mean, th- this, whenever you're calling down healing into it's a, about, yeah, into it's a it's sacred a place. Healing. It doesn't, it, it's not effective for 10 minutes. It's a 10 minute cast. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. You're casting almost like a, like a ritual. Right. I got you. Well, no, 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 the, spe- the spell automatically. Oh, the spell takes itself takes ten minutes. Yeah. Understood. Understood. Spell itself takes ten minutes. I need to get spell cards so I understand the casting times of all these things. I keep trying to cast imprisonment as an action, and keep figuring that it actually takes like 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 a minute to cast that spell. So it's not a combat spell at all. I used to make a lot of my high level NPCs. That was their one ninth level spell they had. Can't even use oh, it. And, and then it's like, meanwhile, they're incapacitated for all of them. And kicks the shit out well, of them. kicks the shit out of them. That's right. I'm like, I should have thought about that. I, should, I shouldn't have picked him prison. That's not, that's not. Anyway, so our party down in the Chiefter's corridors. There are other rooms that you guys can check out. 
Um, some of them, uh, you can kind of hear some activity as well. Um, but, um, you know, or you can just count out the gold that you guys found and we can call it. Yeah. We could also take a short rest in here, which might help you boys out. Oh, yes. Yes. I shall take a short rest in my pile of gold. Okay. So <laughs> we're taking a short rest and then our other friends are casting a spell. Um, it's about, um, it, well, it, it effect, if, effectively, Scott, we, we would also take a short rest during and after. I, I, this would essentially yeah. count as a short rest for Dunny. I would, I would take an additional ten minutes to get back my, uh, my, uh, 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 oh, oh, what, what the fuck, kind of cleric things. Uh, I, I know which one you're talking about. Divine, <laughs> it's not divine sense. It's um, uh, channel divinity. Channel divinity. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't have anything that requires a short rest to reset, so... Rub it in, Dunny. Gosh. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's 8.50, and, and so we don't really have, uh, have, a, have a chance to start up, a, start up another encounter. So we'll probably just go ahead and end it well, there. No, and give let's, it let's, finish up the, let's finish up the role play. Okay, we'll finish up the role play. Because that, that's, where, that's where you're going, is a role play heavy con, am I correct? Correct. So okay. I, I think it might be beneficial for us Give to us try the info. to play that out. Okay. Tell us so everything. after after one hour, after the short rests, um, you know, you guys are up to the north and our other friends are down to the south. Um, and see, 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 the thing is, is that y'all haven't found the chieftain. And so... Huh. Um, we don't need a chieftain. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all don't... But, but you can... Um, you know, um, I'm trying to think here how, how I would play that off then. My, my, my gut would tell me after we've healed, I would want to revisit the dungeon. Okay. So that, that, that's what I'm trying to think as well. After you guys are well healed up. Um, Wait, you, don't tell us everything that's going to happen, Scott. You want to save that for the con members. I know I am. Screw us. No, no, I'm going to. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at this point here, right here. Okay, so you guys make your way back towards the place where you saw the rim rise because you know that the chieftain was dragged off. Well, well, did did we not meet up? Did they not have a chance to get to us? Because I, I, I'm ten minutes out. Um, I, I think that probably, yes, they would have had, a, they would have had a chance to meet up if, if the other party, I'm going to ask them, does the other party have any, um, any desire to try to find a way to meet up with the other? I mean, we were resting. Well, I was going to we say, were... we're resting too, but I'm resting an additional 10 minutes beyond everyone else. Oh, well, we we're going to check out the secret exit to see if anyone was on the other side. So if we get up there, where we're at, if, if you checked out the secret exit on the south, then 100 feet to the north, you're going to see your your two compatriots kind of, you know, basking in this glow of, uh, of prayer and rest and, and and light and such as that. So about 120 feet to your north as you. Go go through that secret door. That that's uh, that's the other side of it, um, on the southern edge of the secret door. Um, you look, and lo and behold, your compatriots are off there to the north. Um, kind of An illusion. I shoot them. <laughs> hey, it's deflected Especially by a Duddy. fucking barrier. Ba-ching, ba-ching, <laughs> boom! Right back in your forehead, dumbass. God. So after your long rest, so sorry. So after your short rest, um, you follow Hockerbrecht into this uh, into this secret door, um, loaded down with a little bit of gold and jewels. You don't want to raid there. You, know, you leave the copper and electric pieces for the uh, for the gnomes so they can rebuild and stuff. No, 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 no. But, Wait, you said there was electrum. Is that worth more than platinum? No. No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Well, it's okay. between silver and gold. Oh, it's no half a gold. Then I, I don't care. I already grabbed their platinum and gold. Yeah, but <laughs> platinum and gold you keep. So, and of course the and the <laughs> don't 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 cast cast to detect good, good and evil. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, I'm fairly good. neutral. I help them out, and I'm taking my pay. 
How did you help them? You just stole I, their I, rebuilding funds. I killed their vampire enemy. It was not their right. vampire, it was your vampire. I killed it. <laughs> Well, that, that's true, y'all. Y'all, um, the thing is, y'all haven't yet found the uh, the uh, chieftain, but at the same time, you you by by basically looking in the secret door, you are able to find your compatriots. Uh, you rejoin them, and uh, if, they, and, if they convey to me the vampire that's been paralyzed, I will go and assassinate her. Okay. Okay. Um, so so they they let you know they have a vampire that's been staked and immobilized. And you just need some type of uh, some type of either oh a hollow spell, a daylight spell. Um, head off wouldn't work. What? Cutting her head off wouldn't work. Cutting her head off and running it underwater will. I mean, I don't know. There's. I, I, I would I would I would have someone escort me there, and I would cast daylight on her, and then uh -huh. continue a flame on the corpse. No. That, that that will have a, a daylight spell will 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 turn her to dust. Daylight Man, spells turn she was to dust. hot in life, but she's smoldering in death now. <laughs> uh, 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 very good. So now we have our we have our vampire has been destroyed utterly. Now you also find um, after she's been turned to dust. This is one bit that you do. You find a couple of. Um, I want to say they're not really parchments. They're more like little notes that have been that have been scribbled, um, and um, you know, along the lines of um, they, they, they look half written, um, and you can't really decipher everything. Are, 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 are they burning under my my eternal? No, no, no. They're not. There, there. There's no burning or no nothing like that. Uh, it just looks like um, like like they were somewhat, um, you know, the the that the material on them just wasn't really good material. I, I will reach into the fire and collect them. Okay, so um, the what you're able to uh, to uh, discern is uh, is a couple of notes. One is from um, um, cathartic to uh, to um, a person that that you can't that you can't see. It's just um, you know, please. The the um, the lair has been secured, waiting for you. Um, you know, my waiting for you, my my eternal. You know that that's it. Just kind of, it, they were still kind of scratches. It's, it's it's almost as if she wasn't yet fully in control of herself. That transition from a spawn to a to a straight up vampire. That's when they're starting to get their their thoughts and their and their faculties, and they can start doing things again independently instead of just being ravenous uh, vampire spawns trying to, trying to eat everything and drink as much blood as they can. They've returned some of their mental faculties, but at this point, it was still kind of chicken scratches and such as that. However, one very uh, well written note uh, is underneath. Um, saying something along the lines of you've done so well my pet please don't don't worry everything will be fine use the uh the the undead that have been sent from jaren wisely do not eat all of the little ones too quickly please send a messenger out uh back back to my home uh, to uh, to uh, let me know uh, when uh, when the area is safe for my arrival, and then oh, that great. sign just in one letter D at the bottom D. As as in as in dread. Uh, you know, it's not Dracula, so so I'm not going to copyright in French anything. But, else. but no, as as in dread, as in Uvek so, the dread. Uh, it could be Uvek the Dread. It could be, um, you know, that uh, Igvel's daughter was named Drelzna, who was also okay. a vampire of quite, uh, quite uh, ill repute in Hockerbrad. So, they, so they, were, they were lesbian vampires. That means Probably. that they, they had so much fun once a month. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually Hockerbrad that turned her into a lesbian. 
<laughs> He's a terrible, <laughs> selfish <laughs> lover. <laughs> I, I, I'll keep that information to myself, but I would actually like going back to my my speak with Ben. I would like to go and search the uh, the the uh, well. I'll, I'll, we'll go back and we'll say go go back to the hallowed area where I assume everyone else was waiting while I while I dispatched the vampire and, uh-huh. and tell them that I believe that the chieftain may be in the dungeons because I was informed that that some of the more prominent members of, of the of the keep had been led there. And if right. that's if you have any interest in in, in in saving or finding any information out about, it may be beneficial to go there. I don't think that there's any, any other threats in this area save for there, because that's the only area we haven't checked. Eh. You go on ahead. Well, that's fine. You go on with that. Split the party. Split the party. All right. I would like to check the Grand Chamber for Boffin. For Boffin. Um, Boffin um, actually... To see see if the description I was given of him is amongst the corpses. It is not amongst the corpses. Corpses. Boffin's, Boffin's corpse has not been found. He's dead. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> Can cross yeah. that off my list. <laughs> Bothan's corpse cannot be found. Yeah, that, that is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. All right. So um, basically, uh, um, Benny and Dunny, uh, Hockerbrecht, are, are you are you content to chill out in the ch- in uh, in the little hollowed area there, uh, or do you want to follow uh, Benny to go? Well, back no, so to the some, little- someone would have taken me to the vampire. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Someone, but after the vampire, then then you're all kind of back in this uh, hollow area. That's uh, that's um, that's good. That 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 you know is safe, and you're pondering what your next move is going to be. And the options that you have, more or less, is that you can follow this this escape route to the north because you can kind of see another 400 feet up ahead. You can kind of see a distant light that kind of leads out of here. To the right? camera. That's right. A distant light, 400 feet. Um, you know, you can see a light uh, to a daylight. So you know that this is an exit, right? Or you can go back to the place to where Benny has informed you guys that some of the leadership, so to say, of the chieftain uh, of the clan was let off in chains. That was um, to the northwest of the uh, room that you first entered, and where you split to two different directions. So those would be your those would be your your options at this point. But you know, it's like I said, it's it's about quitting time, and I have to save some surprises. For, uh, yeah. For, uh, good job, guys. Y'all are able to uh, kill the big bad. And uh, killed the Rimaraz as well, so I didn't get my TPK out of you, but I got close. Got, I got a little bit close on a, on a couple of you guys. So um, didn't get very would be giving me those potions. I would have been fucked, and then everyone else would have been able to be get brought back. So yeah, I mean to be Needed fair, Hunter Breck was not touched at all, so it was great for me. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't touched until the vampire, and then <laughs> I almost died like multiple times. Er- Ernie, you're there was a no, no touch. It was bad touch then. Well, let's yep. uh, let's uh, let's uh, give our final thoughts here, and we'll start off with uh, Chris. What did you think there? Playing a dwarf like uh, Fleming, are, are you thinking that maybe you should have played a, a magic user? Were we, were we lacking a spellcaster? What are your thoughts? Uh, I think a spellcaster would have been good. Um, again, you know, it, and why, it, and why didn't you pick the wizard? Yeah, there was a wizard. Because I've played wizards Wizard before. Are, I've never played a fighter yeah. before, so I wanted to play a fighter. That's cool. That's absolutely cool. How was the character as far as balancing? What would you change about him? Um, no, I, you know, everything was good. Uh, as far as, like, fitting the, 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 the build of the character and all that and the backstory for him, uh, everything seems to fit. Uh, I mean... Obviously, he's got okay. a lot of minuses, but the pluses are where you want him to be for a fighter. Okay. Um, so, yeah, no, I mean, I think it's a, it's a great character. It fit everything well. Okay. 
Okay. Any uh, changes you would do before I before I try to before I try to print this out and uh, and to take it live at a con? Uh, any, well, I any made suggestions. The the only the only thing, and I kind of already changed it in here is uh, for one of the skills, it was a hand crossbow. You had a regular crossbow. Uh, uh, okay, other than yeah. that, other than that, everything seems to be quite quite well as far as I okay. can tell. Okay, uh, that, that's that's good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you made that that uh, that uh, change. I don't, I don't play enough to even really know about those differences. I I do a lot more playing, so that would have totally slipped my mind. That's no worries. So, um, Blake, let me get your final thoughts. Uh, no, I, I, I really like it. The only, the only thing I can really say is I'm like, yeah, I, I would go ahead and say finalize the spell list that I have saved on here instead of okay. giving my full access because this has pretty big utility for what her purposes would have been in this area, okay. uh, it's probably going to be more beneficial than letting everyone, because other, otherwise you're gonna have a cleric that wants to rest every every encounter to, yeah. so that they can, they can re-prepare their spells. So how, how would you, how would you, you know, get some spell cards and say, this is what you're, well, well, because, I, mean, I mean, I would even print it off, well, how, I, I guess spell cards maybe, but, how are you planning on printing these off? Because I'm saying lock in the spells that I have currently selected. So I and I'll probably will do that. Um, it's I'm I, I have some concern about running into players because one of the reasons that people play clerics, especially when I run into power gamers, they try to have a build where they can try to find a way to have access to every spell that's well, ever been. Uh, written, but the cleric right? can't change their spells until the dawn of a long rest. So right. that, that's why I'm saying if you if you don't allow that feature, then you're, you'll be much better off because otherwise the cleric's going to say, okay, I heal, 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 long rest, new spells in the morning. Gotcha. Uh, otherwise, gotcha. I, think would, I think that would slow down your game considerably if you, if you will allow that kind of play. Uh, yeah. That's, that, that's actually a really or good point. Would make the that's a really good more point. Overpowered because they would constantly be fully healed and rested. And yeah. you would have to come up with some kind of way of explaining what happens in the environment during that time period. Okay. No, that's good. That's good. All right. Ernie, final thoughts. Um, I thought that was pretty fun. Um, okay. Yeah. So I, I really appreciated the fact that earlier when we were fighting the creatures with cold, I had cold resistance. Um, I like that there were some benefits and like there was in my pack already the wind stake and so on. Um, now you don't like the hand axe. I know that that was I really like the hand axe. It was more <laughs> my than anything. Um, you should really add some flavor to the hand axe. There's, there's some glittery gold. There's some tassels at the bottom of it. Oh so yeah, any tassels it. because yeah. it, it, you can throw it too. So I really appreciated the fact that I always had an option to throw it if need be, um, though I didn't. Um, the only thing is, you what if I made it a dwarven thrower to where it returns back to you? Oh, that would be great. I would uh, use that constantly. Um, okay. now the thing is you did choose the feet to weapon fighting, but then you gave me a shield. Uh, so <laughs> I was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> okay. 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 So, okay. well, and also speaking along the line of lines of weapons, I that that staff of striking on Benny is perfect. Okay. I, I always it, like Staff of Striking because it, it gives some someone, combat flavor. So she's built to be a melee in the in the middle of things. And so being able to have a weapon that can do that extra damage uh -huh. uh, is is very is, is a very good aspect to it. Yeah. It, it almost gives them like a paladin type flavor with being able to call a strike. Yeah, that's good. Carol, final thoughts. I have fun. This is good. I think uh, your players will enjoy it at um, Gary Con. Um, I think I think I'm glad you have four slots because <laughs> yes. think, yeah because I mean hopefully you have I keep wondering how much more content we didn't get to hopefully about two hours or an hour and a half more yeah um, you had you had one bone devil two gray slots five vampire spawns and two chain devils are those effectively in the dungeon well the gray slots are right outside the um 
You're giving um, it all away, man. You're giving it all away. I don't well, no do- one watches this shit, so you know. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll probably change it. No, it's, it's, there is more content. And, um, and, and and the thing is, I also have, I've I've thought about this. I have like a whole other adjunct dungeon to this, to where the undead are coming from. Kicks away from our Tuesday improv shows. I did. I did (laughs) actually, actually, I did take some tips from the improv shows. No, it's, one of the one of the biggest things about when we were talking about the past couple of things on you know between the roles is is how to you know weight your encounters a little bit better and and how to what's the best way to say this is that don't be afraid to modify an encounter um like first of all i like like the rimaras i had those in two completely different rooms the younger one and the bigger one i said well why should I do that? Why should I put them in two different rooms? You have a, basically a baby and a mama. They're, they're going to be together, right? It makes a lot more sense. And the, 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 the space and how you can use space and how you can use maps. Why not put a big creature like that in the area, in the biggest room? So that's, that's one thing that I said, well, I need to, I need to modify that. I need to, I need to kind of, and I made that change the minute that you guys walked into the room. I said, nope, you guys see two rimmer asses, not yeah, one. No, what he said was, fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah, basically, basically, my thought was, oh shit, because I know Split how tough they can my ass. And that was a mistake, but then I said, Blake, Blake hit a home run there with that yeah, spell. No, that, that was good, because, I mean, it has like 215 hit points. It, it's 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 we, a lot of hit points. I mean, I can certainly dish the damage, which was good, yeah. and try to make I didn't really get a chance to do it because I had to keep moving. If I had a tank in front of me that was basically keeping him in place, then I would have been able to get all yeah, three. Yeah, if I hadn't lost like 76 hit points in the first That's attack, right. I would I would have been able to do that. No, yeah, it, was, they, it was absolutely fine what you did. I thought that was great strategy and just said that that hail, little Hail Mary was, yeah. that was unbelievable that you pulled yeah. that off. And that saved the combat right there. That saved us both. Yeah, you know, it would it would have been hard. You you could have fled. I was going to get killed no matter what. <laughs> Dodge was is amazing. That's I love that. You know, have oh my gosh, that would have been yeah, fifty points of damage, and I halved it to twenty five. So that made a huge difference. Well, Etherel making his save against the harm spell, right? That yeah. that 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 kept you up. Yeah, yeah. mind you, if I, I didn't switch to a bard last minute. That would have screwed right. you over. See, that's yeah, true. Is that bardic inspiration? Yeah. 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 That was, no, that's that's a good point. I think we've done some great changes on our character set. I I went and uh, I turned her from two weapon fighting to crossbow expert. So yeah. I would have hand crossbow. That said, if I had the bonus action, but I was constantly disengaging, then I would have been able to shoot twice with the speed one, and then once with the you know once with the hand crossbow. You're gonna. Oh, that's the one thing you will have to change it if you have the crossbow speed in your D and D beyond because I don't seem to find it here. So I, I don't think he's giving them D and D beyond. I think he's just printing out character. You're sheets. not gonna print them out yeah. from this. Oh, okay. I thought you were printing it off this this actual thing. Um, well, I mean, I can print them out from D and D beyond, right? right? I mean, I can make the character sheet and print them out like that. That's what I thought you were gonna do um, yeah. because that's what I would do. <laughs> It'd be the lazy yeah. way to do it. Um, yeah, no, that's what I'll do. That's what I'm going to do. Keep in mind, I don't have a crossbow of speed. Now, if you make her totally ranged, I might start her with that instead of the rapier. Because I have a magical weapon otherwise. The only one magical weapon he gave what one piece of armor and one one um, um, one weapon. Right. So oh, I, don't, I don't have magical armor. What? I don't have magical armor. Really? Yeah. You get a plus two, plus two leather, and oh, I, yeah, I guess I, I guess I have what plus one plate. Never mind. All right, there you go. So yeah, I, I, I typically but, everyone has some type of thing like that. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So I did, I did leave the rapier on my list, even though I knew I was probably never going to use it. Plus, I you know actually get the crossbow speed, of course, over the course of the adventure. So right. I, I, that's the reason why I left is like, well, I got it anyway, so I would still have the two items. 
So it wasn't going to really matter, but I was going to go total ranged. And I thought that, you know, considering we were so frontline heavy, that was a, probably a smart move. And if we'd ever yeah. got back together and done more fighting, I think it would have shown more once we okay. did that. But it was fun. It was fun. And I think it people should this. No, well, that's good. Kyle, we'll give your last thoughts and then you can you can take us out. Uh, yeah, no, I thought that, uh, making Hocker Breck a bard really filled in some spots that yep. this party was missing, as well as really streamlining him, uh, mm -hmm. near the end there. Um, there's some other things that I'll, I'll mention off the okay. air. Um, okay. but, um, <laughs> no character was a lot easier to run, uh, he felt like a fighter when he was a fighter and he felt like a magic user when he was using magic and he yeah. seemed capable in both regards. Yeah. And, so and, and, was, and he's, he's supposed to be the guy that's always almost, you know, you think he's never really that strong, but he's always like the last guy standing and mm -hmm. that's, and that's, and, and that's I would of, have been yeah. if those other two fell. Oh, that's good. Though. That's good. Yeah. No, I, um, well, thank you very much. Uh, I really do want to say thanks again for helping me play test this stuff. There were a lot of rough edges. You guys did a great job in helping. Well, and even though we can't hear you because of your directional microphone, we all want to thank you for taking the seat in the big chair. I'm sure, yes. Frank, I'm sure Frank appreciates it as well. <laughs> great. It was really fun, Scott. Uh, well, thanks it was a good. lot, guys. Thanks a lot. It was guys. our pleasure. Mm -hmm. So I'll, uh, we'll uh, sign off then. And Frank, if you can, uh, you can fade us to black. Just 